This is Kilbert Gottfried, <laughs> and I'm here with Frank Santo Padre, and this is another episode of Gilbert and Frank's <laughs> amazing colossal obsessions with old black blues singer <laughs> Knuckleless. <laughs> oh, yes, no, no, Ray, knuckles. Ray Bo- he was born without knuckles. That's about to be painful. I tried to have my head sewn back on after the last episode. And, <laughs> and he can't visit people because he can't knock on the door. <laughs> oh, that's so, sad. Yeah, Why can't he kick it when he yeah, tap it with his foot? Tragic. <laughs> Hi, Paulie. Tra- Hi, I, I, I hope the readers and the fans love hearing about my medical reports because hey, it means a lot point, to me. That would be a thrill. <laughs> Did I thank Kirk Hammett on on a previous episode for sending us wonderful swag? You did. Okay. Well, I don't yeah. have to do it again, it's but thank you. It's pretty fantastic. And also, Kirk, if you're listening, I'm the furthest thing from a medium. Right. <laughs> thank you again, Kirk, for the wonderful swag. We will put that up on Facebook. If we haven't already, who knows when this episode will post. So here's what we're doing. Uh, we always read Twitter, episode, uh, Twitter questions. We get complaints from the lovely f- uh, fans and friends and folks at the Listener Society. Hey, why don't you do questions from us? So, we're going to alternate. I'm going to throw in some tweets. Paul's going to read some questions from the Listener Society. Frank is going to read some questions from the Listener Society. Sounds and like complete chaos. It does sound like complete <laughs> chaos, doesn't it? it Gilbert's does. going to nap. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone has a role. I'm, I'm going into that zone where uh, you're going to have to keep going, so, Gilbert, you wear <laughs> shoes, right? <laughs> Like the like the Billy Kramer episode. Yes, yes. That's, that's now known as a Peter Fonda. Yeah. Uh, so we will try to answer as many of these as we could possibly get to. This this could take hours. In the time allotted, <laughs> it's summer. It's seven hundred and forty fucking degrees in this booth. Yes. Oh Gil- yes. Gilbert had a stroke twenty minutes ago. Uh, and here we go. Paul, you want to kick us off? All right, from Todd Ginter. Now this is a bit of a trick question, I think. What is the origin of Gilbert giving such a long and detailed introduction to each guest? How do you do it, Gilbert? Well, I I, I think it's when we're not sure if the guest has anything to say. <laughs> we fill it up with an intro. I think there's a couple of reasons for it. We try to mm-hmm. remind people of all that they've done to mm-hmm. get them up to speed because the show is a is a, an historical document yes we these and, are kept in the uh, library of congress at the smithsonian uh, actually well we we, we we try to cover the entire guest's career the other the other thing is it's a nice warm-up it's kind of a it's richard kind calls the show a a, a 60 minute blowjob <laughs> which is very flattering <laughs> we try 90 to, minutes we try 90 minute blowjob <laughs> we try to flatter the guests by putting as much of their accomplishments in there as we possibly can and then they were shorter if you go back and you listen to the old episodes right. and over time <laughs> They just expanded and expanded and became a running joke. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I like about them. <clears throat> Every introduction goes along and it's nice and does what you say. And there's always a sneaky little kicker at the end, you know, like... Uh, yeah, we put one in. Yeah. Please Which welcome a man who... Who right. was the only person ever to have stepped Correct. off. Correct. <laughs> we always, there's always a twist yeah. ending. Right. Right. Gilbert always has a quip about mm. them being found dead in their Los Angeles apartment. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's part of the, the the level of art people don't understand. The creativity that goes into... A lot of, a lot of time going into them. <laughs> okay. Did that answer that question? I think so. Okay. All right, Frankie, you're up. I've got a Listener Society member, Laura Ciani, or Ciani, I'm not really sure. Okay. Is Gil watching I'm Dying up here? And if yes, what is his take? Are you watching the Showtime show I'm Dying up here? Wow, I've lost track of how many of these shows about comedians there are. (laughs) Movies about comedians. Yes. Some that you're in. Yeah. This is not the one with Artie Lang. No. Yeah, I did an episode of Crash. Crash, and, crashing. And, oh, crashing. Right. I did an episode of Crashing, Judd Apatow's This isn't the show. marvelous Mrs. Maisel He's Hobbin. in that, too. Yes. He's in the pilot. Yeah. I'm in, the, yeah, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I do a, a short bit. And in you're the in the comedian, the De Niro With picture. Robert De Niro, yeah. Right. And you're, uh, in, you're in the original Enter Laughing with Rennie Santoni. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not? We got to get Rennie Santoni. Rennie Santoni, Santoni we'll put the word out. Dara, find Rennie Santoni. You know who else was in the pilot? Marlon Brando. And I think the pilot at the time 
was uh, who's that comedian? Yeah, yeah, Richard Pryor. Yes, I know where you're going. I, I, I don't know. Does this have to do with uh, Marlon Brando fucking Richard Pryor? In Boy, the well, ass? that came in at the five minute mark. Yeah. That we broke a record. You are, but you are not watching. <clears throat> if I may, you are not watching. I'm dying up here. Uh, no, I don't think I've Showtime. ever seen an episode. I think it's it. loosely based on the uh, on the comedy store and Mitzi. I think, they're, I yeah. think the main character is based on Mitzi Not to Shore. be confused with I'm Dying In Here, loosely based on this show. Yes. <laughs> and 170 <laughs> degrees in this in this, in this this uh, booth at the moment. All right, Raybone. So I got a couple of couple different uh, responses here that see, I think work together. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Tell us so Ed Marcus says. Oh, Ed Marcus. Any possibilities of golden age porn stars oh, such as... Be- Jerry Butler, Rod Jeremy, or Kay Parker. Jerry, or, Butler were, Jerry Butler was a soul singer. Or would-be golden age porn stars such as Gilbert Gottfried, who is never quite... A, now, go, a now, golden age porn star on the show. Now, who, here's... Who was that? Who was that one? I think he may have died, though. The one that looked like Elliot Gould? Jamie Gillis? Uh, no, no, not <laughs> Jamie Gillis. <laughs> Elliot Gould. But the one who, uh, from Deep Throat... Uh, Johnny uh, Johnny Holmes, John not, Holmes, not John Holmes, the other guy. Uh, I don't know Gerard Deep Throat, um, De- Gerard Demiano. Was it Rex? He was the director. I'm throwing names out. Was it Rex something or uh, okay, a lot? Of, look, a lot, a Paul, lot of the, uh, for Christ's sake! He can't well, research. He's asking questions. I mean, yeah. Can but you here, find? I'll research out of it. Deep Throat. Right. I'll research it. So he's it was famous. He's in Harry Reams. Harry, Harry Reams. Reams. Yeah, Harry Reams is dead. Yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys died. Jamie, I think, what's his name died? Uh, I think Jamie Gillis died. Yeah, he Harry, died. Harry, Harry Reams is dead. John Holmes is dead. Uh, Marilyn, Only the good die. Home. Marilyn yeah. Chambers is dead. Bajini is dead. <laughs> Sachi. Yeah. Mo Green. Now, this, this, here's the interesting thing. But, Randy, Randy but, Phillips. But Michael. I am the hunted one. <laughs> he's, doing the, he's doing the Turk. He's doing Salozzo. Also dead, by the way. That, oh, uh, yes. yes. That actor. He yeah. was terrific. What the hell was his name? It just Letiri? jumped out of my head. Alatiri. Yeah. Also gone. He well, was also in... Uh, he's in The Getaway. Yeah, in, in The Getaway. In the Getaway. And he was in that movie with Charles Bronson. Uh, Mr. Majestic. Yes, very yes. good. Yeah. Very good. Look at look at how the two of us work yeah. in concert. We're like Sandler and Young. There are seven billion people on Earth, and oh, only and two of you who know all those. Come marching in, except I want to be in that number. All right. What what were you saying, well, Rainbow? Here's a, so here's the deal. So if we could get some of these people who weren't dead. Uh, Randy Phillips writes in and says, "Any chance of you guys ever starting a video podcast? Now that would be perfect." Golden Age porn stars on a video podcast. That's another loaded question. There, there, are, <laughs> there, there are many reasons why we don't do video on the podcast. And that's uh, foremost among them. <laughs> I've explained them in the past. I, I may explain it again. Part, part of the reason, too, and I think Gil will agree. Uh, Gil, I'm over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just supposed to say... Gil, you've uh, listened to podcasts, haven't you? <laughs> Gil, you use shoelaces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we this show this show relies upon uh, candor and yes. and 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 the stars kind of telling fly on the you know fly on the wall right. uh, tales out of school stories. We 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 worry that if we shoved a camera in their face, they would be more self conscious and less forthcoming. It, it's kind of like there have been situations where I've been with other comics. At a table and we're joking and having laughs and a good time. And people say, oh, you know, a bunch of comics sitting around the table every week. That would be hysterical. And it's like if you made it into an actual show, everyone would come there with like, Prepared Everybody material. be self-conscious yeah, yeah. and freeze up and you'd Just lose the spontaneity work. of it. Like, yeah. the, like the spontaneity we have here. Yes. Hey, that leads to a question from <laughs> Ed you miss Marcus. out on this magic? <laughs> Ed Marcus wants to know, and Ed, Ed's got a lot of questions. I'm just going to pick this one. Go ahead. Because it ties into another comment. Has anyone ever pitched Gil on a starring in a, on starring on a TV show? And what's funny is during the Bill Macy clip we put up months ago, if people remember that. Yeah. Uh, Greg Pear commented that Bill Macy should be cast as Gil's father 
in a sitcom, which I think would be pretty great. Well, well I believe Gilly and Billy. I believe Larry David wrote a sitcom uh, for Gilbert. Oh boy! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Norman's Corner. Was that supposed to be a one-off, or was that supposed to be a pilot for a series? It was what they call and get your punchlines ready. It's what they call in the business a backdoor pilot. Ah, <laughs> we already did that. We already talked about Brando and Brando. Yeah, and and what that means is that you don't actually say it's a pilot. You show it as a special with the hopes Got it. that it'll get made into a series. Right. And this one was pretty hopeless. As my memory <laughs> serves, that was called as part of the Cinemax comedy experiment? Yes, yes. That was a failed experiment. Yeah, Norman's <laughs> Corner, written by Larry David. It's on... Uh, it's on YouTube. And and I've said this before and but it's worth Arnold repeating. Stang's great in it, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my idea to have Arnold Stang. <laughs> that was the best part. And but the best part about it is when Sein, when they were pitching uh Seinfeld as a series, they said, Well, who's gonna write it? And they said Larry David and the studio exec said, Isn't he that guy that wrote that? piece of shit (laughs) (laughs) and the rest is history yes (laughs) so i've got another one here from jim wright okay if this is too personal gilbert don't feel you have to answer oh oh, yes does gilbert still pop into clubs and work out material or does he only work when he is guaranteed to get paid and have a free meal uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've answered the question. Is Jim Wright a club owner? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> You're not one to work out new material in a club. You're not one to pop in. I used to be obsessed with working out new stuff. And pop in. Yeah, and yeah. popping in. Yeah. Now it's like I have, now I have to force myself to work when I'm getting paid to work. Right. Yeah. What a treat that must have been for comics, uh, for for an audience who came to a show just to see, you know, open micers or, or, and then you would pop in. Yeah. And hey, Gilbert Gottfried's here to try out uh, some new Corbett Monica material. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. New jokes about Esther Roll. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine if your waiter was Robert Mitchum. (laughs) It might go something like this. I miss, I miss the days of the pop-in. Yes. Pop-in. All right, Verda Rosa. Uh, Joe Montoto mm-hmm. wants to know, what is the boy's opinion of the swimmer being able to be seen as the unofficial precursor to falling down and eyes wide shut as hold as, as hold it to be? As I, as as I, I hold, hold it. it to be. I can't read. The swimmer <laughs> is the precursor to eyes wide shut. And falling down. Not quite getting that, are you? I'm not getting that either. Having seen all three of them, and they're very different. Yeah. I mean, Eyes Wide Shut is about infidelity and obsession and and tr- trust and, and, s- and sexual obsession. And, and falling down is about a guy who snaps and, and, and fights back against the system. Is Eyes Wide Shut meant to be watched start to finish or just fast forwarded through? <laughs> I may have done it wrong. <laughs> to, to watch your name's ass. Uh, what was Nicole, Nicole Kidman? Kidman? Nicole Kidman. Yeah. In that movie, greatest ass <laughs> ever. Yeah. 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 That was just perfect. I, I, Good I, thing your wife's not here to hear that. Yes. <laughs> I, con- I concur. <laughs> yeah. And, and Nicole Kidman... God bless her, especially her early days. She had no problem getting naked for movies. God bless her. Yeah. Our favorite kind of actress. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if only Marie Dressler yeah, was, was like say, that. Something you don't say about Mildred Natwick. <laughs> <laughs> if only Thelma Ritter. <laughs> Macy's ain't got any. <laughs> Nobody's got any. Mr. Raybone? I got. I lost the kill, but I lost the listeners. Nice society. job. Oh, Paul God, Raybone, God, ladies God. and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> well, without knuckles, it's hard to work this I thing. know. It's your knuckle, knuckle-less. You're really up against it. I think what he meant to ask was what Joel Beaver was going to ask, <laughs> which is, will you ever get any of the Petticoat Junction girls on the podcast? By which I think they mean as a guest. Well, let's see. Uh, Matt, I, the, the Petticoat Junction girls. 
I don't think I ever watched an episode of Petticoat Junction. Edgar Buchanan is Uncle Joe. Oh, that's and right. And here's Uncle Joe. He's yeah. a moving kind of slow yeah. at the junction. <laughs> Petticoat Junction. Great and, theme song. And I remember uh, that was about the height of sexuality when they throw their dresses yeah, over the, the they water. Throw the, throw the, yeah, the yeah. water tower. I, I don't uh, Probably not. Uh, probably a little obscure for us, uh, unless they did a lot of other stuff. We tend to run into trouble with guests who've done one famous for one thing. But remember the show fondly. I've got one from Mark Loftus. Okay. Mark Loftus wants to know, how did the Richard Donner episode not have a question about George Maharis and Perfecto Tellez? I'll edit out Max in the back later. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can, can we keep the screaming to a minimum out there? <laughs> how did the how did the Richard Donner episode not have a question about George Maharis? Well, we, 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 we had to fit in the Danny Thomas story. I guess he means yeah. because what he's leaving out is, does he mean because Richard Donner directed episodes of Route 66 with with George Maharis? I guess that's where he's going. Oh, there. then we're going to have to get Richard Donner get him back. back just for that. <laughs> yeah. Just for that purpose. What do you got, right. Ray Baron? Well, I don't know where the hell I am here. This guy may have never heard the podcast, but let's go with it. Anyway, the perfect storm of Hollywood lore, outlaw exploits, and nut job conspiracy theories. Who's he talking about? Randy Quaid. Right. Could we get Randy Quaid as a oh, guest? I, you, I got a, would, you got a net? That was, <laughs> you got a I would net? love to have Randy Quaid. Yeah, Gilbert enjoys, show. he enjoys the meltdown guests. Yes. <laughs> he yes. likes he likes a Corey Feldman, a Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert would be happy to interview David Berkowitz through plexiglass yes. on this show. <laughs> or the dog. <laughs> he's not it, he's not particular. It it's my favorite thing with Randy Quaid is when he went into hiding <laughs> in Canada and in Canada held the press conference to announce, I'm hiding out in Canada. <laughs> My favorite was the sex clip he released of him and his wife, Evie, uh, wearing masks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was that was even so more they, disturbing. Oh. Nobody would know who it was. Nobody would know it was Randy uh, uh, Quaid. After like the fifth time, I'm like, I'm not watching this exactly. anymore. This sucks. Exactly. Exactly. Excellent in the last detail, in in Quick Change, and Ter- so many terrific movies. Terrific actor. Yeah, yeah very. Fun. Tony Shalhoub was great in Quick Change. Tony Shalhoub, we should get. He's, we should in, get, New, he's, he's yes. in New York. He's yes. been here at Nutmeg he's, a number just, of times. Yes. I recorded him for a couple of movies, right. and he's starring he, just up. Tell the Dara to put Tony Shalhoub on the list. He just what, uh, he just won a Tony, so he's going to yeah. be harder to get than he would have been a week ago. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> and and I this did, show has cred, baby. <laughs> I did three episodes of Wings. There you go. So you, there you, you go. Were you on Monk? Uh, no. Okay. All right. We're going to chase uh, Tony Shalhoub. Nothing be... that happened in the past five decades. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's up next? I got one pulled up. This ties back to the um, to the, the gifts we got from mm-hmm. uh, Kirk Hammett. But Terry Motley wants to know, most prized memorabilia owned by each of you? Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Memorabilia? You, uh, is it your? Uh, well, I know did you that. Keep, did you keep Herman the Asiatic insect? Oh uh, yes. Years? Okay, you still have and, it. And I thought that one was lost, and we were looking for something else. And I thought, oh my God, there it is! Wow. And I have that poster of Frankenstein. Yeah, that's good. That's a cool. What is the? What, that's vintage. That poster, of Frankenstein. That's an original. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, you that bought that I, in the sixties? Yeah, when I was a kid. I got when I was a kid. That's in Gilbert's <laughs> living room. Yeah. So get ready to to snort some coke or whatever. Oh, it's a drinking game. I was a kid. Uh yeah, I I ordered that. Oh, and I also have an autographed Wolfman photo signed by Lon Chaney. Very cool. Wow. Very cool. I I I don't have a lot of great merch uh, that I've held on to over the years. I've gone back and 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 bought some of it. I bought some Green Hornet stuff from the '60s at Comic Cons and such. But I yeah. my favorite my prized possession is my 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 personalized letter from Frank Capra. But that's not memorabilia. I'll talk about it sometime on the show. Yeah. You've get, well, you've got the Gilbert. Uh, one of my favorite things of yours that I've seen is the, are the life masks. Those are great. Oh, yeah. He's got great life masks. Yeah. 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 yeah, Lon Chaney, Vincent Price, Beta Lugosi, and Al Pacino. And yeah. Simon Oakland. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> My favorite and, memorabilia is the Gilbert labeled shampoo bottles from the screen. Also desk. great. And, and <laughs> hard I've to got, come by. I've got two autographed photos from Catherine Hepburn. Two. Yeah. You know what's pretty cool is that Simpsons cartoon that you have in your bathroom. Yes. Two. Yeah. One yeah. of the artists uh, drew a picture of me like post coitus <laughs> with Marge and Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> and Marge is there with her tits out. That's a pretty a cigarette. That, that's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> and and me yelling, I love LA. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it memorabilia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, who's next? So uh, here's one that you, let me see if you guys know this one. Kevin Rogers shared in a photo, a publicity photo from, let's see here, uh, Claudia Jennings is in this, Maureen McCormick, William Conrad, and a bunch of other faces members of this group will know from 70s Drive-In Goodness. Any idea? Mm, Maureen McCormick and William Conrad? It says, there. This this the poster says, this, can, this show contains 100 proof women, <sighs> run, running shine, cross the county line. Don't know it. Moonshine County Moonshine Express. Moonshine County Express. They made a million of those things. They make it every night. It's <laughs> when I hear William Conrad, I think about William Conrad sending mash notes to Joyce Van Patten, which she revealed on this show. Do you remember that, Gilbert? Oh. Or calling her house and trying to get a date with her? <laughs> Cannon. Remember Cannon? <laughs> yes. William Conrad? Yeah, and, and he used to always be on... Um, Rocky and Bullwinkle. He was an he was the announcer for yeah. the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. It's another another case there where you two have unearthed Hollywood secrets. That once have again, never, once again, Gilbert has crystallized my thoughts eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and William Conrad was the original Marshall Dillon on the radio. Oh yes, yeah, yes. Gunsmoke when Gunsmoke was a radio drama. Mr. Verderoso? He would have been a great interview. Oh, all those guys. Dennis Weaver. Yes. Mike Connors, we tried for. Mannix. Yes. He was in poor, poor health. I've got a good one, and it's a timely one, from J. Michael Carter. Is there a podcast a do-over on? <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> there are some that shouldn't have been done in the first place. And I'm assuming he means this show. I don't think we could do. Others. Does he mean this particular podcast? <laughs> what does he mean by do over? Maybe one that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> which one? Which one did go well? <laughs> there, are, there, there are a couple episodes buried in Gilbert's backyard in a shoebox. <laughs> and and we'll never I'm see sorry, the light of day. I have to interject. There are 212 episodes released of this show. Some of them are pretty good. At least 12. <laughs> I, I will stand by at least 12. Hey, they're. It's, Speaking of midget <laughs> actors, yeah, uh, yeah. were we? Yes. <laughs> there was. There's this actor, Frank Vaccaro. Okay. That if you saw him, you'd you'd recognize him in a second. He wasn't Mickey on Seinfeld, was he? he uh, wasn't that no, guy. no. The, hmm. There was. Well, there's another one. I'll look him up. Tony, something who was in. Uh, I'll look him up. Frank Ficaro. You sure you got the name right? I think something like Ficaro. Okay. He he was in, I think, American Drive-In. Oh, my God. Ficaro sounds Italian. Where are you coming it? up with this stuff? And then there's another one, Tony something, who was in that one with um, uh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, the oh, Bad S Santa. Bad Santa. Bad Santa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he shows up in all those crappy kind of... Uh, movies that try to I know be who you mean. Well, there were, there were, He's a black actor. There were two yes. or three bad Santas, weren't there at least? I don't know this Frank Ficaro that you speak of, and he's not coming up in my uh, in my Google. So okay, we'll have to... if you look up um, American Drive-In, okay. I think the name All right, while I look it up, I have a Frank Ficaro who died in Fairfield, Connecticut, but he was a plumber. Okay. <laughs> good seen enough. a lot of his work, though. Yeah, his and work. Really his good. Under, underrated work. Uh, okay, keep them no. coming, and I'll All look right. up American okay, so Drive. Somebody, I just have a reaction here, not a question, but as we wind down, <clears throat> Sean Mason writes in to say, "I'm sure I don't have to tell Gil and Frank how fucking amazing the Peter Fonda interview was. How nice! You yeah. couldn't have written a goddamn interview that was better than that. Honestly, incredibly revealing, and what a denouement! Being Hank Fonda's kid was no picnic, obviously, and Peter's openness about that relationship." 
was astounding. And interview, ready, gentlemen, an interview for the ages. That's oh, nice. Perfect. How flattering. Oh, sorry, that's a typo. Interview for the aged. <laughs> yeah. Very good. That was a that was a good episode. We were thrilled to have him in here. Yeah. You know, when the, that's when the show is peaking. You know, when, when we're sitting with a Carl Reiner, a Dick Van Dyke, a Peter Fonda, no, Jimmy I mean, Webb was in here. Peter Fonda is is the, the the living embodiment of the sixties. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And he's perfect for what we do. He's a yeah. he's a historical figure. Although I, it was as we noted a couple of times, we uh, you guys you asked him a question about something, he says, Let me tell you what happened. And then got off somewhere yes. and never yeah, he, quite. He went on a few never tangents. Quite. And that, was, <laughs> that was the best cheeseburger I ever had. We loved him. All right, I'm looking at the cast of American Drive-In from 1985. Yes. I have Emily Longstreth, Patrick Curtin, Rhonda Sales now, Joel Bennett, John Rice, Allison Heath, Mika, Kevin Miller, Bernard White, Larry Cot- Cortinas, Flip Kobler. I do not have your midget actor. Oh, geez. Danny Nucci, Buck Carter, uh, David Donham, Joseph Maletti. No, I do not have a Frank Ficarra. Wow! So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to do some extra research on this to connect the dots for you. I gave it a shot. Wow! I got, uh, I got and, a question. We maybe and what was the guy? The guy Tony something. I'll look him up. Tony. I, yeah, he's the guy from uh, Bad Santa. What do you got, Frankie? Okay. Jim Schmalbach. Love him. <laughs> Love his work. No, I don't know how he got us. When was the most recent time that Gilbert didn't recognize Frank outside of the studio? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> yeah, five minutes ago. My brother-in-law, Rodney, is a set dresser on Crashing, and Gilbert did a guest spot. So I said, here's what you do. You go up to him, and you introduce yourself, and you'll chat with him because he's a fan. Yeah. Calls me the next day, says, I went up to Gilbert. I said, hi, I'm Frank's brother-in-law. <laughs> he stared at me for about four minutes. <laughs> oh, wait. We have our, our guest. Tony Cox is the name of that actor. Tony Cox. Our guest just put... Hold up on his own research, Paul. Yes. On his phone. He's not, this is his first time even seeing this show. Yes, he won a contest, I understand. With, can you say the name out loud? Phil Fondacaro. Phil Fondacaro. That's it. Phil Fondacaro. Put Phil that phone away. Fondacaro. Jeff, put that phone away. <laughs> yes. He's got it's, a very <laughs> gruff sounding voice. Phil Fondacaro? Yeah. Wow. He didn't realize what he'd won was a new research position on the podcast. Like those, <laughs> those old yeah. laughing bits. If, if Yvonne DiCarlo married Phil oh, Fonda yes. Carl. Yeah. So, uh, this, so this he's, is a, he's a guinea midget. <laughs> that, doesn't offend, that, that won't offend anybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, somebody named Akaria Adam Podiavsky yeah. wrote in and simply said, the undersea world of Jean Cocteau. <laughs> Yes, Gilbert, Gilbert had a little confusion. I, I wanted it. I, I thought. I, 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 Gilbert made a joke then that I thought was a great joke. If you don't mind, I Go won't ahead. be able to tell it the way you did. But uh, he started playing with uh, Jacques Cousteau and fooling around. He says, "Yes." He says, "You walk and you walked in here dripping wet and smelling of trout." Yes, <laughs> that's I thought Gilbert. trout was exactly the right fish to make yeah. that joke. That was there, no, salmon wouldn't have worked. No trout. one is more clever at covering his own mistakes. <laughs> Than Gilbert Gottfried. I've had so much experience. <laughs> this Phil Fondacaro has had quite a career. He has. He's in Devil Do- Dolls. He's in Evil Bong. He's in the Polar Express as an elf. We'll have to get him. Phil Fondacaro. All righty. Heard he's a little hard to get. All right. Yeah. That's a wrap, kids. Oh, thank, it is. Thank you for the questions. Done so soon? Done so soon. We're at the 28-minute mark. <laughs> did did right. it ever begin? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get out of here and take care of my knuckles. Thank you yeah. for, to the Listener Society. Thank you, Frank, for the idea. Thank you, uh, Paul Knuckleless Raybone. <laughs> I know a good hand specialist. <laughs> thank you. We'll talk. <laughs> Ah, this has been Gilbert and Frank's amazing, colossal obsession. Thank you all. 